No doctors gave us hope. And this is kind of hard, but he threw the keys on top of the table and said, that's what your son's going to be. That was how we were told that we were told that our son would be a vegetable. We never know when tragedy will strike. I'm pregnant. Yes, I'm going to have that little perfect life. I'm going to have everything. And then when he was born premature and then they told you he'll have severe cerebral palsy, you're like, oh, great. Why me? At any moment, we could be desperately looking for answers. The doctors, they send you home. They tell you there's no hope. Put him in a, put him in a nursing home. There's no hope. You're eventually, you know, she'll eventually windle away. After exhausting every avenue of modern medicine, patients and families are left with little or no hope of recovery. The doctor at the hospital had me, had my mother and father set up an electric bed in my, my parents' house and said, send him home. He'll never be more than a vegetable all the rest of his life. The doctors in the hospital told me that for the next probably for the balance of her life, she would be dependent and she would remain hospitalized for several years. I called a friend who was a medical scientist at Mount Sinai and he introduced the subject of hyperbaric oxygen. In 1972, Dr. Richard Neubauer established the first hyperbaric oxygen treatment center in South Florida. The future of hyperbaric oxygen is in neurology. We have changed the name of our center from the Ocean Hyperbaric Center to the Ocean Hyperbaric Neurologic Center. We're one of the few centers in the world doing nothing but neurology. Traditionally, hyperbaric treatments were used for divers suffering from the bends and for wound care. Dr. Neubauer's vision was that hyperbaric oxygen could be used in a new way. Dr. Neubauer, having treated wounds with hyperbaric oxygen, saw that certain multiple sclerosis patients improved despite the fact that uh, they had MS and didn't come to uh, Dr. Neubauer for that condition. They came for their wounds. The hyperbaric oxygen applied for the wounds also overcame a variety of uh, multiple sclerosis symptoms as well. And that's how he recognized that brain deficits could get better when oxygen is applied. He knew that when deprived of oxygen, the cells and tissues of the brain die. This can be caused by stroke, traumatic brain injury, near drowning, or other insults that restrict circulation to the brain. Dr. Neubauer proposed that not all affected areas of the brain died, that some cells instead became inactive, dormant, or sleeping. He called these cells the recoverable brain. We look upon brain injuries as an atomic bomb, insult. There's an epicenter that's gone. You can't do anything with this. But as you fan out to the periphery, as in the atom bomb, there's the possibility of viability. We were the first ones to be able to show with functional brain imaging the recoverable brain. He thought that if there was a way to get oxygen to these brain cells, perhaps some function could be restored. He decided to supply pure oxygen under pressure directly to the affected cells and tissues of the brain. With the use of hyperbaric oxygenation, many of these cells begin to fire again. The equipment to do this is simple. It's called a hyperbaric chamber. Hyper means more, and baric refers to atmospheric pressure. A patient sits in the chamber for an hour as pure oxygen is pumped in at more than atmospheric pressure. It's painless, safe, and non-invasive. Inside the chamber, the cells and tissues of the brain are bathed in oxygen. The hyperbaric chamber is the most effective way of delivering a lot of oxygen to the entire body. Uh, I can think of no other way that does it so effectively. The challenge was to find a way to scientifically measure any changes that occurred in the patient's brain due to the hyperbaric treatments. Dr. Neubauer turned to a diagnostic nuclear medical imaging procedure called a SPECT, or Single Photon Emission Computed Tomography Scan. Unlike MRI or CAT scans, SPECT scans show actual brain function. Now, 
Dr. Neubauer had the means to scientifically measure the effect of hyperbaric oxygen treatments on patients. This is a SPECT scan of a normal brain. The red areas indicate normal blood flow and functional tissue. But when brain function is suddenly interrupted by stroke or other insult that restricts circulation in the brain, brain cells stop functioning, as indicated by the dark or cooler colors. The yellow areas are what Dr. Neubauer calls the recoverable brain, areas that might be able to function again. The increased color in SPECT scans after hyperbaric treatments indicate recovered brain cells and reactivated neurons surrounding the severely damaged and oxygen deficient areas of the brain. There's a high correlation between the improvement in blood flow and metabolism of the brain as seen on the SPECT scan and the clinical improvement. There was a man over in Paris who over a course of a number of years collected some 80 cases of people who had near death from hanging and if they got into their his chamber within three hours over 80 percent of them were able to walk out of the hospital that same day whereas those who did not get the that uh, treatment unfortunately remained in coma or died a high percentage of them died oxygen is absolutely crucial to life and uh, treating a lot of diseases a lot of different diseases with oxygen makes sense and the best way to deliver oxygen is under hyperbaric conditions Eric, a healthy two-and-a-half-year-old, hits his head, falls into a swimming pool, and nearly drowns. We called Dr. Neubauer one day, and uh, we said, how do we get our son to see you? He said, well, can he be moved? We said, no, he's actually in the hospital, still in rehab, uh, in a vegetative state. And he just went through a couple operations. Uh, and he said, well, bring me a video. Okay, we took a video of, the, of our son. Uh, we brought the video in, meet him one day, and the moment Dr. Neubauer saw that video, he said, there's movement. What are you doing? Why isn't he here with you today? He said, Quote, if unquote. If there's movement, there's hope. And, uh, That's where we started. Uh, we would not give up, though. Yeah, he is he's, he's our son, and we will not give up as long as there are still other ways and other people helping us, giving us hope. We will find the way. And yeah. that was what Dr. Neubauer did. We all need leadership uh, from one thing or another and I think Dick has to be considered a, a leader in this country for the for the use and a, and a proponent of the, the value of this uh, of this uh, concept using hyperbaric oxygen to s solve neurologic problems started having movements started seeing him cry uh, facial expressions laughing uh, we started doing a hyperbaric in conjunction with regular therapies, PT, uh, OT, and speech. And by doing those together, we were able to reconnect the brain, connect the bridge is what they called it, from one side to the other. And uh, no matter what he had lost, we could do it. We only use 8% of our brain. There's much more there to work with. He's not afraid of the water. Go outside and experience new things. To see him running around when, when they said he wasn't going to be able to move. Uh, to see him eat whatever he wants when he couldn't swallow a glass of, uh, of juice. We can go to Disney World. He's a, he's a challenge. He's a challenge, but he's amazing. Devin, born prematurely and in need of open heart surgery, diagnosed with cerebral palsy. Actually, how we got here was a subscription. It was called Exceptional Parenting. I was just looking through it one night, and there was just an article that said, there's hope for cerebral palsy and brain trauma. And I'm like, okay, what kind of, what kind of hoax is this, you know? I read it, talked to a therapist the next day. She knew about the information and she encouraged me to gather the information, so I called. The therapist said there's absolutely no harm, and I think that's what brought us here. There is absolutely no side effects. Nothing can go wrong by doing these treatments. We're looking at the functional brain scan on uh, Devon. This is the baseline scan. These areas that are yellow ideally should be all red. And this measures the blood flow to the brain. This is a 3D reconstruction of the surface of the brain by the computer. And we can see these areas, these little holes. Punched out areas are areas that are not receiving enough blood or oxygen. We can see there's been a significant filling in in these areas. There's still little deficits here, but the filling in has been significant across here. These are the major ones. On the 3D reconstruction, we can see that this is now approaching normal.